No, it's not a, a people mission. Uh, it's a robotic mission. And the people who subscribe by pledging at kickstarter.com will be able to participate. But it's a science-led mission. I think that's the most important thing to bear in mind. We've got the top scientists around us. We've got Rutherford Appleton Laboratory leading the project. Uh, it gets exciting for individuals because it's the first time that they've ever had an opportunity to get involved in the space project rather than just looking at it in the sky. Kate, do you think this is the future? It's harder and harder to get government funding and for governments to justify funding for uh, space, space missions like this. Are we going to see more crowdfunding? I mean, there, there have been actually other projects that have used a crowdfunding model to, to get things up there. There's um, been Kicksat and some of the Google Lunar X Prize teams have looked at using crowdfunding to get their robots to the moon. Um, I, it's a nice idea, and I like the idea that it will get people involved. I think that's really, really important, but I, I don't think it's going to be the end of governments. And, and commercial industry uh, funding space missions. So, Intel, just tell us how people can get involved. Well, if you go to kickstarter.com, they'll ask you for a pledge, and you can do it for three pounds, which means you'll get a certificate and we'll look after you and keep you in touch, or up to 5,000 pounds if you want to actually do all the things that we can offer right up to watching the rocket take off. You can send your DNA into space, can't you? Yes, the DNA has is, been described is, as and uh, strand of hair. <laughs> We're going to send hair as a possibility because it's very light and very compactable. But the most things will be digitized in, in a sealed container, which won't obviously leak. Because we're extracting from the uh, moon's core a lot of rocks which we can analyze, when that hole has been drilled and the rocks extracted and the scientists are working out exactly what it all is about, well, then we're going to fill the hole with these canisters. And that gives people the chance to choose what they would like to bury in the moon. Okay, there have been a number of manned missions to the moon and uh, we brought moon rocks back. I mean, is there actually anything more useful that we do need to know about the moon? Well, yeah, I think there's still a lot that we, we don't know. I mean, we, we sent a few missions, and that was quite well, a long time ago. Cheese, don't we, yeah. <laughs> it's not made of cheese, indeed. Um, we, we haven't really explored the, uh, the, the poles of the moon at all, and we haven't really scraped the surface of the moon. We haven't gone beneath the surface and, and drilled down like this mission will do. So I think there is some science to be done here, which is exciting. The is whole it? point about the moon is that we don't know really where it came from. We think it came in a collision with the Earth four and a half billion years ago and then sort of formed itself into what it is now. Yeah. Since then, it's been bombarded with meteors and goodness knows what else. So the surface is really not indigenous. I mean, is the moon fair game? Anyone who can get anything up there is, is, is welcome to have a go. I mean, do you need a license for this sort of thing? No, you don't need a license because we're a scientific mission. But I think that we obviously need to think forward. If you're going to ever send human beings to Mars, then in my view, you need a lunar base. Uh, there are all sorts of reasons for that, but if you're going to provision people who are on the further planet, you need somewhere it's where you don't have to... a one-way trip anyway. Yeah, well, if you anyway. don't have to yeah. try and get out of the Earth's atmosphere every time, which is horrendously expensive, uh, you can use the moon as a base. What do we find on the moon that could be useful for human habitation on the moon? We don't know.